So what is growing on? I figured I'd give you guys a little farm nursery update here this morning. I'm heading out for a new project we're starting today in Delon Springs. And I figured I'd touch base with you guys and let you know what's going on over here with the market garden. I have really gone to the dark side. We tilled this, we've got black plastic on this, um, kind of did some things I didn't expect to ever do here, but this is a one-time till and we're just putting the plastic on here to kind of keep this garden to sleep before we actually start planting in it. We're still in mid-July, not even mid-July yet. Um, at least a month, month and a half out before planting season here in Florida. I want to tell you guys what we've done so far. So we've done a double till here on the site. And just on Friday, we put about, oh, I don't know, about 100 yards of organic matter on this. And when I did my first video here, I think I was a little bit off on the size of the space. This is probably closer to 6,000 square feet, not 12,000 square feet. Um, I redid the measurements and I was way off probably going to do about another six or 12 at the other location but for this site probably stopping here for now other than the sweet potato patch um, but we put 100 yards of organic matter on this and what we used was not old mulch but actually over there on the far side I have stump grindings and the stump grindings tend to have a lot of dirt in them um, not as much woody material as we get out of the mulch like we have over here and it broke down to be some of the nicest material I've ever seen um, I kind of ran out of space over there. I cut off my neighbor, the stump grinder. I said, I can't take any more of that material. And since I put it down over here, I'm like, you gotta start bringing me that material again. And we're bringing it to the new location. That's another video in itself. The mulch is off the chain over there. Um, but we ended up putting about 60 yards of the well broken down stump grindings here on the bottom of this and put about 40 yards of that organic compost, which I had over here. It's completely gone now on the top. And Nick just kind of want to let this sit for a couple days, see if we get any weeds germinating. Um, you know, if we do, let them pop up, then put the plastic over and hopefully burn out any of that weed seed. So veggie garden coming here soon. Um, if you guys can see that Centropic over there, it is so green. It is ready to be cut. I'm kind of waiting to go over there with the video, uh, with the camera for you guys to make a video, do a cut, hopefully sometime next week. It needs to be cut now though. I'm kind of uh, a little behind schedule on that one. I'm about a week out from getting 50 meat birds. Um, guys, feed is through the roof. I can't even tell you. We're gonna start um, raising some of our own chickens. I'm actually gonna try bringing some chickens over to the other location, see if I can raise them on more of a forage. Um, you know, they're obviously not gonna get as big. They're not gonna grow as quick. They're not gonna lay as many eggs, but you know, if we can get away from using this expensive feed, last time I bought feed, it was 34 bucks. The next time I bought feed, it was 38 bucks. And we're talking about non-GMO organic feed here, not just the regular, you know, cheap feed from the feed store or, har or uh, I say Harbor Freight, uh, tractor supply. So um, it's up to over 40 bucks right now. I think I just priced it, it was $40.20 uh, per bag for a pallet. I mean, those chickens are going to cost me way over 20 bucks a piece to raise. So once again, guys, not raising chickens on my own here to save any money. It's to know where my food comes from. It's to know, know what those animals eat and the quality that you just can't purchase anywhere else. So Mr. Uh, Drillbit over here is making some noise this morning. These eucalyptus trees are filling out really nice. And I figure I'll step over here and show you guys real quick the sweet potato patch. We ended up getting some beans in there on a trellis over there on the far east side. Um, actually, that was an area where we didn't really, we had some slips that just didn't do really, really good. You guys can see we're getting some mole issues in here. Mole, 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 mole. A couple different spots throughout the garden. Lots of mushrooms in there, breaking things down, coming up every single morning. And like I said, we got that trellis there in the back. That's actually a special variety of bean I'm trying to grow out so I can save seed for next year. Um, and that's the sweet potato patch, so stay tuned. Next video on that will probably be from the drone or when I harvest, so. All right, so I completely forgot to tell you guys about amendments. Um, I did put 200 pounds of granulated azomite and 200 pounds of organic fertilizer on this to add a little bit of nitrogen. So putting it to sleep with a little bit of that good stuff when we wake it up, we're gonna put some worm castings on it, 
maybe a little bit more fertilizer. We'll see how that soil looks, but otherwise this is ready to go to sleep. So sneak peek. So I'd show you guys the centropic, just a little sneak through how tall the grass is, how tall the nitrogen fixtures are. It's pumping. Farmer Nick! Howdy. Hey, welcome to Florida. Thanks. How you adjusting? It's hot. It's hot yeah. here, huh? Yeah, I need a haircut. Are you ready for the growing season? Yeah. Yeah? Always. It's been a year since I've planted anything. You ready to get that 100,000 square foot garden going, dude? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, how big is it for everyone? 6,000? Uh, 6,500. 6,500? I was off by a little bit. A little bit. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right, stay Always. tuned, huh? Yeah. Garden updates every week? Maybe. You want to give us some backstory, bro? Where are you from, dude? You're not from around here, are you? From Maryland originally. Last four and a half years in Washington State at Paul Gauchy's, back to Eden. Um, and then Virginia, or Montana for the winter. Two months in Virginia, and now here. Okay. Yeah, so all over the place. Hopefully you found your forever home, dude. And we'll see. Let's make dreams happen. Yeah. Guys, I just spent a week down in South Florida. Um, I say a week, five days with the team. We went down to Homestead. We got tropical fruit trees. We got fruit, we went to Fruit and Spice Park. We kind of just had a, uh, a team field trip, trip, we'll call it. Kind of went on a little bit of a fruit hunt. I left the camera at home. I wanted a break. I wanted to just have a good time. I wanted to eat fruit. I didn't want that commitment to having to pick it up. So I do need to get back down there and see Campbell, Fruit and Spice, a couple other cool follow-up videos I do have on my list. So stay tuned. Something I want to tell you guys is Went to 10 nurseries while I was down there. Bought lychee, bought longan, bought mango, bought sapodillas, I bought white sapotes, um, I bought some atamoya, which are really hard to come by. I paid retail on a lot of these plants. Um, plants are nuts right now. The plant world is just insane. Plants are going out the door as quickly as these guys can make them. And they know that the demand is up there, so they're charging higher for them now. So like jujubes, lychees, I bought all those at a retail price. So if you guys see prices going up, um, you know, in the plant world here, it's because the prices are going up. There's nothing we can do about it. I'm paying more, they're paying more, we're paying more, shipping's more, gas is more, etc. But something I want to give my team a little shout out for is, out of all the nurseries I went to, I did not see healthier, nicer looking Japotacabas. Um, most of them were yellow, most of them were brown, most of them were in full sun. I really think that having them there in this dappled light situation underneath the oak trees helps to keep them as green as they are. Um, maybe our water's a little better. Hat could have something to do with the water down there in Homestead, but we are killing it as far as the health goes of these plants. I mean, look at most of these red Japotacabas have beautiful orange new growth. Um, and don't get me wrong, we get the occasional die off in here, but for the most part, these guys look great. We've got three areas like this now. I've got one over there on the other side of the farm, and I've got the back nursery just completely filled with chipotacabas and i just sold a few hundred of these i had a couple of nurseries come up from south florida you know told them that i i have a ton of these they look healthy they look great you know if you guys are interested let me know i sold um a few hundred off at kind of a uh high wholesale um low retail price a bit of a discount definitely nicer than anything they have down there and the other thing i'll tell you is three gallon plants look like one gallon plants down there seven gallon plants look like three gallon plants to where i feel our three gallons are probably bigger than their seven gallons. I mean, look at the size of this thing. Whoa, big red Jabotacaba. So enough, uh, enough with the shout out to ourselves here. Um, girls are killing it. We're doing a good job here in the nursery, obviously expanding here at the new place. We're shipping some new stuff and that's what I wanted to take you guys over and show you. Girls are packing today. Shipping house is going. You guys kind of hear the blower in the background. We've got some QC, quick check, sticks getting picked up for the weekend. So it is Monday. I'll show you guys what's going on. Let's head over to the uh, online store. And that is a fresh load from my neighbor, Chris, who's stumped up. That's the grindings I was telling you guys about that we put down in the garden. And these are the kind of surprises that come in with the grindings. Every once in a while, there's some plant material, there's some philodendron in there. And there's some really old broken down stuff. Guys, this is something new um, that we're trying. We've probably shipped out about 20 pieces so far. We're starting to ship bamboo. Um, I've got some really nice boxes for these. The biggest issue with the shipping of the bamboo is 
the soil mix that's being used in these pots is kind of heavy, so shipping costs um, are up a little bit. Um, but I believe we have seven clumping varieties available. We have Alphonse Carr, we have Asian Lemon, we have Yin Yang, we have Graceful, we have Sea Breeze, we have Black, and we have Chungi Eye. I think that's the seven. I usually try to keep about 12, but I know I have seven ready to ship. Got about 300 pieces right here. So there's a really large chunk of bamboo here. And those are all for the online store, guys. Um, got some pineapples in here. We need to get some black weed mat in this area. Got a lot of this um, Puerto Rican variety of the taro. This is a really good taro variety. Also just a really beautiful plant in the landscape. That's what I love about it. Um, got some more of the amaranth, some rosemaries. I believe I see some bee balm in here. Rosa Sharon, Tulsi. What do we got, more pineapples. Malabar spinach. More perennial peanut. And that peanut's a little bit on the yellow side. Might need some of that nitrogen, so. And this is the non-edible variety of uh, elephant ear. This one was here on the farm. Kind of looks similar to the taro, but the taro has a much more roundness to the leaf. Doesn't have these points up in the corner. Um, as you can see, just a pretty plant in the landscape and the taro will do that same thing. Guys, look at the size of this chaya tree. Guys could eat off of this all year. If you aren't growing chaya, you need to. This is great for attracting butterflies, bees, beneficial insects. And it's awesome, Just a, it's just also an awesome staple crop. Um, perennial vegetable to have in the backyard. So, pretty tree in the landscape. If you need to eat it, it's here. Kind of stacking functions. You can see some butterflies up there dancing. And today is shipping day, so. What is new? We've got some new grapes available, some different varieties of muscadines. Um, I believe I have some bay rum available. Lots of variegated nopales, a couple different varieties of the pigeon pea. Um, I'll tell you what's new. We typically, we just had a big sale. So we had to buy two, get one free. That one might even still be going. Every holiday, guys, we try to run some type of sale here in the nursery, whether it's 4th of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day, um, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's Day. You name it, we try to give you guys a little bit of something extra um, during those type of events. So stay tuned if it's near a holiday um, and you're looking for some special items in the online store. Let's see what's going on. Nobody's even in here working behind me yet. Guys, it's quiet. They haven't even started shipping and the shipping house is empty. So they're pulling orders as we speak and we'll be packing and shipping boxes here within the next few hours. All right, so Turk's Cap Hibiscus, Firebush, um, what else do I see? Mexican sunflower. We've got some elderberry in here. Lots of cranberry hibiscus. That's probably uh, one that we can barely keep in stock. I see lots of the standard red firebush back there, dwarf firebush back there. We still have lots of one gallon grafted avocados. Um, this is the Kinoff, the dwarf Barbados cherry. Lots of different varieties of elderberry. Beautiful looking. Um, Vitex here this morning. Lots of different Catley guavas. Got some uh, lemongrass it looks like going out today. A lot of our natives are over here. So we've got the coral honeysuckle. We've got the native Fakahatchee grass. Got the native muley grass. We've got the Simpson stopper. And then towards the end we have some rosemary and some vetiver grass. Oh, I do have a couple of cercopias left for shipping. These guys are getting a little big. Definitely going to get smushed going in the box, but we have shipped a couple of these guys. We've got a few left. Definitely hard to keep in stock. Um, got some of the cat whiskers here. This is a really pretty one. Makes a really nice white flower in the landscape. Got some figs, longevity spinach, Okinawan spinach. Looks like we got some weeding to do in these areas. Lots of stevia. Bigger... Um, this is the stevia, and we had some bigger Turks caps over there that were all just cut back. Looks like they've been in here doing some pruning. Lots of Montingia. This is the strawberry tree, if you guys aren't growing this one. Literally tastes like cotton candy. Even if you're in a more, you know, cold temperate area, this can be grown as an annual. It fruits at such a young age. Right now there's flowers and fruits all over this. Um, you know, it's not a big deal if it dies from the, from the cold. Um, you know, you plant a new tree the next year, grow it as an annual, potentially. I planted two more here this year. 
If I get 100 fruits off of each and it dies in the winter, it's really no big deal. Lots of the edible leaf hibiscus in this area. Tons of katuk, Togan spinach, edible leaf hibiscus, whatever you want to call it. We've got a bunch of different varieties. This one's really interesting with the red leaf. This is a really big one. We did just get some more of the purple possum, passion flora edulis in stock. Um, great one to set up a tree, put on a trellis. Makes hundreds, thousands of fruits every year. One vine can make 2,000 fruits a year, so it's pretty incredible. Okinawan spinach, one of our favorite uh, perennials. Really beautiful on the bottom side of the leaf. I love that deep purple color. Edible raw. Nothing but sprayed on it. Lots of little bananas coming in. Um, low lot, Thai pepper leaf. We've got lots of little coffee plants. Um, lots of little miracle fruit plants. A couple different varieties of the Monstera. A couple different varieties of the spiraling ginger. What do we got growing on over here? The lesser galangal. Um, some different varieties of turmeric. A couple different varieties of the Miami or the sisu spinach. We've got this one for days. Makes a beautiful ground cover, does good in the shade or sun. This one's doing really good by my house. Um, Bacopa, very, very medicinal. And I believe this is that Jewels of Opar. I like the leaf on that one a lot. Has a really, really nice crunch to it. And what we got growing on over here. So lots of chaya. Um, I need to get this one in the ground. This is the marabou variety and it has a much bigger flat leaf compared to that one I showed you guys in the beginning of the video. And we're gonna try making some uh, grape leaves like the males um, out of this very soon here because I obviously don't have a big enough muscadine where that will almost get to be about like a foot, a foot and a half size leaf. The other one's about the same size but it's much more serrated. So I believe this is that marabou variety. Um, lots of caliandra, awesome powder puff, nitrogen fixers. And what else did I want to show you guys? Oh, butterfly pea. This one's going off right now. This is nature's Kool-Aid. Really beautiful uh, flower. This is the Clitoria. Um, goes on a trellis really well. This is a viner, vining species. The coolest thing is the drink. I need to make a video for you guys on that one. Um, literally makes like nature's Kool-Aid. And just tons of herbs, medicinals, salvias, vitex again. And those are some of those new lychees I just brought in, kind of hiding here in the back. Some of the sapodillas hiding in the back. I did find an interesting clumping grass last time I was ordering some plants. We're trying something new here. I'm gonna try this in the chop and drop, see how aggressive it is, see how well it recovers from coppice. If it does well, maybe I'll tell you guys more about it. Um, until then, we're just gonna call that a regular red fountain grass. Um, couple different varieties of cassava always in stock cmc40 togo um milkweeds i see the bees in here oh those big bumblebees are in here working this morning uh oh lots of lula avocado that is a cold hardy one Here's the queen of the shipping team. Good morning, Esmeralda. Good morning. Uh, lots of native blue porterweed. Edible flowers, taste like raw mushrooms. And you can see these are those grapes I was telling you about. This is an Alachua variety. These already have grapes on them. They really look beautiful, ready to go. Get them planted out, keep them on a trellis. Um, got some different blackberries. And like I was saying before, we've got some of those bay rum. Yep, bay rums in one gallon. And I've got some tick seed in one gallon. So, little nursery update. Girls are killing it. Um, I did not see them in here, but I will tell you that we got some more rainbow eucalyptus in. And this time I bought about 10 times when I bought last time. I was able to get them a lot cheaper. So, if you guys were looking for a rainbow, we got the price down on those a good bit. I have seven gallons, 15 gallons, 25 gallons. I've got some huge trees, guys. Those things grow fast. Um, can't wait to see the rainbow start coming off the trunk. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick little update video. I'm heading to a project today in Delon Springs. Gonna make you guys a new video. Gonna head over to the new site, get you another update video because you're not gonna believe what's going on there. Most importantly, it's 2022. Get out there, start a garden, pound some dirt.